This silhouette is recognized the world over. It's sturdy, aggressive, and cheap. And in popular media, the AK-47 is often found in the hands of the bad guys. Part of that is its history. During the Cold War, the AK was standard for the Russians and the Chinese. Another part is its sheer abundance. There are over 100 million AK variants in circulation today. And after the fall of the Soviet Union in the 1980s, AKs found their way into the hands of many third world countries. Today on Esports Armory, we'll look at its place in history and pop culture and speak to esports pros, M Elite, Tens, and more to understand its competitive gaming role as the power choice among assault rifles. If you've watched an action movie or played a first person shooter in the last 20 years, you're already familiar with the AK-47. It's everywhere in popular media and gaming. Often, it's the more powerful, but slower firing and harder to control option. Like in Counter-Strike, where the 7.62 caliber puts out 35 damage per shot at 600 rounds per minute. Compare that to its M4A4 cousin at 33 damage per shot, but 666 rounds per minute. It's even more cost effective, coming in $400 less than the M4. Something else that mimics the real world in that the AK is inexpensive to make and easy to acquire. In Valorant, the AK is called the Vandal and it too is the more powerful rifle compared to its counter offering, the Phantom. Whereas the Vandal is deadly at any range in Valorant, the Phantom is faster firing with a deeper magazine, but depicted with a damage fall off at certain distances. The AK is also often seen as the arms choice for Western opposition in mass media, specifically Russia, where the AK originated from and to this day is a source of pride for the country. This is indeed the case in Escape from Tarkov, developed by St. Petersburg-based Battlestate Games, where players have a choice between 19 different AKs. So, let's dive into the history and specs of the AK to get a better understanding of its depiction in pop culture and competitive gaming. To do that, we're bringing in British Army veteran and military tech advisor for the latest Call of Duty, Hugh Daly. Hello there, my name is Hugh Daly. I am a military technical advisor, most recently Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The origin of the AK-47, not a lot of people know this, but it was developed and it came out of a contest held by the Soviet Army at the end of the Second World War. A young sergeant by the name of Mikhail Kalashnikov won the contest and the rest is history. So the first variant came out in 1948 with a milled receiver, 7.62 by 39. Almost 10 years later, an AKM variant came out with a stamped receiver, which made the weapon a lot lighter, a lot more usable for infantrymen. So if the AK-47 is the granddaddy, the AKM is the first son in the generation. So they wanted to make a weapon that was easy to clean, easy to use, easy to fix, wanted to revise and update the weapon that they'd been using and pushing off to their allies and friends all around the world. But they came up with the AK-74, rechambered to 5.45 smaller cartridge, out to about effective range of about 300 yards, which is roughly the same as the M16 and the M4. So the great grandson of the AK-47 is probably the AK-74U, deliberately made to be very short with a folding stock, shortened barrel, interesting flash guard on the front of it because the flash is incredible when you fire those, and it's full auto, so you can put a lot of rounds downrange very quickly. Originally designed for paratroopers and for special operations, specs mats, people like that. So just like real life, the AK-47 and its derivatives is a weapon we like to think used by bad guys. The, originally it was the Soviet Union, the Red Menace. I mean, they, came, they were gonna be flooding across Europe with their T-72 tanks invading Germany into France and then taking Great Britain. It's something that's been used for so long and they're everywhere. With the backstory filled in, we now turn to the digital side of the AK. So popular and recognizable is the rifle that it was even turned into a trophy for the CSGO tournament Flashpoint. So 
So let's check in on the professional side of esports and see what they have to say. Hey guys, I'm Emma Leeds. I'm the team captain and in-game leader for Dignitas' all-women CSGO Valorant team. I think using the AK-47 in Counter-Strike was probably one of the more difficult weapons to start learning. I would go on aimbot server and start one-tapping like all the bots, and that's kind of the weapon that helped me improve my aim accuracy. Oh. I just don't, I don't oh. know. Pros of the AK-47, it's a one-shot kill, headshot. Cons of it is you really have to get to know the AK-47 spray pattern well. It's a quite unique one, but in terms of using it in like a scrimmage or a match, it was one of the harder weapons to learn for sure. Uh, help, help. First transitioning from CSGO to Valorant, I picked up the Vandal, and I quickly learned that this was the most similar to an AK-47. Valorant for me, I kind of see it as CSGO was kind of the first step of the ladder, and then Valorant is the next step. I think Valorant's definitely like a good mixture of CS with certain aspects of games I like with abilities, so. I definitely think that uh, all my time in CS was definitely preparing me for Valorant. If I'm thinking about the Vandal, I think one tap at any range. I think of highlight clips because I think the Vandal has a really high potential to just kind of pop off at any moment. When it comes to actually choosing the real world counterparts for the weapons, the weapons had to have a unique silhouette. There has to be at least one key identifiable shape that lets the player know what this weapon is. We'll give one of them a banana mag, right? The thing that players know, they know it from the AK-47, either games like CSGO or Call of Duty. We wanted this to feel like someone had taken an AK-47, like for the Vandal, and brought it into the future. Yeah, we also went through such heavy playtesting. Like Valorant's been in development a very long time. The Vandal used to be way more unstable than it is now. Like we had a joke that after you fire two shots, it's not a gun anymore. So everything has gone through like extensive iteration to where the arsenal is right now, where we think it's like this perfect number of 17 guns. Do you ever just have that weapon that you use in league play or just in any game and you're just like, wow, this gun is so good, I actually feel bad because that's how I feel when I use the AK-47. My name is Dylan Price, otherwise known as Attach. I'm a professional Call of Duty player and now I'm currently in the Call of Duty League playing for the Minnesota Rockers. I see him using this bulldozer for cover. He doesn't have wow. much teammates to help around him, but it's unable to and all the work It's what makes him one of the better players in competitive Call of Duty. My name is Ian Enable Wyatt. I am a current content creator for 100 Thieves. I used to be a professional Call of Duty player, professional Halo player. I also was a multi FPS champion. I think the AK-74U is a perfect gun, to be honest. You know, that gun is one of the more versatile SMGs in, in the past couple COD titles. And the AK-74U, it can be a laser beam. But the trades are certainly in there, trying to play to go yeah. everywhere, and Simp kills them all. It's amazing close range, it's really good medium range, and then even at long range, you find yourself being in a lot of positions where you are killing the assault rifle players across the map. Big wins, the busy though, oh, busy though, oh, busy though. Just being able to run around the map and challenge people, just trusting in your skill and ability to make every gunfight a winnable. When I play, oh, here you go, come on. You can't slide against me when I have the AK-47, brother. The AK-47 truly is a rifle bred for action. It's made to work with any military, anywhere in the world, in any condition, and still function not only as a powerful weapon, but a powerful symbol. True to form, there are more versions of the AK-47 represented in video games than you can count, but it all follows real-world logic. But in the end, the weapon is only as powerful as the wielder, and the AK is where you look to find the playmakers in esports.